the final set of secrets for the final DLC of The Last Souls game. And it's fitting that in this DLC, there are some of the best secrets of all. Case in point, number one. I can't find the purging monument, and I've searched high and low. What if it was never here in the first place? The purging monument. You can see it, but how do you get there? This question completely absorbed like over 10 hours of my playtime. And the only location I could conceivably find that could possibly lead there is this chute leading upwards. And behind a broken statue engraved upon the wall, other words, show your humanity. I was lucky enough to play the DLC a couple of days before it was public, and I couldn't rely on Vardy's amazing videos to help me figure this riddle out. So I tested all kinds of things for hours and hours on end. I tried to get the Herald headpiece. I cast all kinds of abyss magic. I tried chameleon. I did all the friendly human gestures. I died in front of it. I did everything on my massive checklist until I discovered I was using Chameleon in the wrong place. See, Chameleon is based off your immediate environment, not the general vicinity, which is what I thought it was. So, if you cast it atop the Abyssal Swamp, then you will turn into a Humanity Sprite, which reveals a ladder, which leads to a final Judicator Giant, two Ringed Knights, and the purging monument of the Ringed City. Are you certain of that? No. S sorry, I, I know you'd never lie to me. Thank you. Thank you kindly. I'll speed right on over. It won't be long now before I know everything. Who I was, what I lived for, and what my name was. And I'll have you to thank for it all. I swear upon my birth name that I am your friend. No matter what might come out, no matter what I was, if you would do me the honor, allow me to be a true friend, always. Of course, Lap deserves his own video, but find the purging monument before he goes hollow and you'll restore your dear friend's memories. And in the shared grave, he shows his true self. Oh, finally, you've come. Now I know exactly who I was. And for that, I've a little thanks to be giving. Go this way and peep past the broken staircase. Some awfully fine treasures just sitting there all alone. <laughs> It'll change your life. by the greed of men. Rubbish to one such as I, devoid of all worldly wants. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's just the way we are. I'll stick you in my prayers. A fine, dark soul to you. Patches is one of the very few undead who made it to the end of the world. Think about that, he made it through all those cycles and ages of fire to get here like you and like Gale did. So bearing that in mind, I think that his words carry a lot of weight. His ashes say, he never lost heart and never looked back. He marched in one direction and that direction was dead ahead. Number three, beyond the shared grave is Dark Eater Medea, the archdragon who was tasked to eternally battle and consume the dark. As you progress through the ringed city, look behind you sometimes. Medea takes perch upon multiple towers of the ringed city, watching and waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Oh, that's nice of him. He chose a bridge where I can take cover, dash out, attack and just rinse and repeat until Medea falls into the chasm. So, Medea hath into the chasm fallen, still his voice I hear. The dark grieveth him yet, 
I prithee, put him to rest before the dark consumeth him and his vows are forgot. Just afore the church of the princess standeth a tower honoring ancient knights. There lieth the small shrine behind the sculpted knight which beareth no arms. Tis from there one may descend the chasm of darkness. I prithee, put the great dragon to rest. Medea, descendant of arch dragons, was raised by the gods, and due to his immortality, he was the perfect candidate to battle the dark, for he would never forget his eternal duty, even after the gods perished. From Medea, you discover a covenant with the spears of the church, knights who are sworn to the defense of Princess Filianor. There's a small shrine to the spears that you can find outside the church of Filianor. Here, you can contribute spear ornaments, one of which drops from the Argo boss fight. Offer one, and Shira will acknowledge your covenant. Oh, thou art now a spear of the church. What a wonderful, blessed day this is. With a spear such as thee, surely the princess will slumber most gently, and Medea's vows will be honored. And with the covenant equipped, you will be summoned by the Judicator into the worlds of those who trespass upon the Church of Filianor. Kill a trespasser, and you'll receive a spear ornament, proof of your fulfillment of duty. If you offer ten, then you receive a young grass dew. Offer thirty, and you receive a divine spear fragment, which is used against online foes. And it's at this point that you'll be named a divine spear of the Church by Shira. Ah, thou'st a divine spear become, an honor once bestowed in the time of the gods, nearly unheard of in this age of waning fire. As a servant of the princess and friend to Medea, I am honored to have met thee. This game isn't live for me right now, so I can't test this, but assumedly players are summoned into the boss fight itself instead of half light to fight against other players, you know, Old Monk style and Mirror Knight style. Which is such a shame, because I've already killed Argo, and that means I can't test this for myself unless I make a new character. If only there was a way to revive him. Oh, you can. Just travel back to the Purging Monument for some reason, and for the low, low price of 103,000 souls, you too can experience the fight all over again. Next, number six, the lightning arrow miracle that Shira uses. In this room, before you fight Argo and after you first face Medea, is an illusory wall. And behind it is another illusory wall. And behind that is another illusory wall. And then there's the lightning arrow, a miracle that was used by the few female knights who served in the war against the dragons. Number seven, I wanna talk about Filianor, specifically her name, because one thing we really, really haven't touched on at all in my videos is the etymology of certain names in Souls. Miyazaki clearly pulls from all kinds of languages when he designs these names, and a lot of them are really quite beautiful, and Filianor is the perfect example. She is the youngest daughter of Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight. And there are two components to this name, Filianor, that were posted first, I think, on Reddit by a user named Nightfrost. So the first part of her name, Philia, means daughter in Latin, and the second part, Anor, means son in Elvish, and is of course what inspired the name Anor Londo. Philia Nor, the daughter of the sun, the daughter of Gwyn. Um, there is another interpretation you can go with. Uh, this was posted by Dark Soul in Us, and he or she says that the word nor is Latin for daughter-in-law, which casts some new meaning on whether Filianor could actually have had a different mother to the other children of Gwyn. And with Yoshka somehow being revealed to be a child of Gwyn as well, it becomes less and less surprising that we're learning about more and more of Gwyn's many children. Number eight, the ring-burdened pygmy statues. A revelation in this DLC is the circumstances surrounding the first men and the gods. 
So as an example, from the Ringed Knight set, we learn that early men were originally very close to the Abyss, and that while their warriors actually fought with the gods against the arch dragons in that famous war, they also suffered at the gods' hands afterwards. For the gods seemed to fear the Abyss, so they branded the armor and the weaponry of the knights with a seal of fire, occluding the darkness of the Abyss. And this brand, of course, has appeared time and time again, this great burden to mankind. And here, in the Ring City, we learn more about how it came about. And we'll go into this so much more in other videos, so subscribe if you haven't already. I just want to say I love that the burden of the seal is represented so literally by these statues. Next, we've mentioned this before, but depending on whether you kill the demon from below or the demon in pain first, it determines whether you get the fireball demon prince or the laser demon prince. And originally, the demon prince fight actually featured only one bat at the start, with the second one appearing halfway. And additionally, I also want to point out that the description of the soul of the demon prince has changed from what I said earlier. It now reads, the demons, birthed from a common chaos, share almost everything between them, even the pride of their prince and his near-faded flame, so that the last demon standing may rekindle it. The description before this revealed that this was indeed the demon prince that was defeated by Lothric, and that in this hollow tree, he lost the memory of flame that burned within him, which marked the end of demon kind, and they removed this description. So, I think they were trying to imply the death of demonkind more in this new description, because now, neither the demon in flame, nor the demon from below, remain alive to rekindle the final flame of chaos. And finally, number 10. Kill the stone-humped hag at the beginning, and this happens. My time has come, has it? Well, maybe I'll get to see an angel. Sure enough, an angel does appear, but this one is curious compared to the others. As far as I can tell, it doesn't actually reappear once you kill it, like the other ones, for it has no discernible fleshy avatar parasite thing on the ground, uh, like the others that grow over the corpses of pilgrims. And perhaps this angel is a resurrection of the hag, but the parasite has yet to grow inside of her? Unless there's something I'm missing here, there is no material benefit to killing the hag, nor from killing any NPC in the Ring City, really. Lap, the Corvian, the Pygmy, the Locusts, none drop a thing. So, I'm currently lacking about four more things to make another one of these videos, and I know there's more out there that I haven't found yet. So if there's anything that you've discovered, post it here in the comments and I'll try to give you a shout out in the next one. So good luck out there, enjoy the Ring City, and I'll enjoy making videos for you to enjoy when you're done. See you soon.